the time, not just here in the United States, but everywhere in the world. It's an affliction that affects millions of people, mostly men, but sometimes women as well. And yet, somehow it's gone largely unnoticed. The signs and symptoms at first seem very subtle, um, but once you understand them, they can't be missed. You'll see the victims of this affliction everywhere you go, on the streets, on television, in the halls of this institution. I'm talking about bad suits. Like most men, I used to believe that a suit was only worn on two occasions, when you're married and when you're buried. I, too, made the horrible mistake of buying a suit without taking the time to ensure that it was both stylish and properly sized. Today, I will walk you through the process of buying a suit that fits your body and your budget. Now, a suit is like a tool, and a tool has a purpose. The first thing you need to figure out is why you are buying a suit. Are you trying to get the job you've always dreamed about? Maybe get a date with a girl you've always wanted to ask out. A suit that you can wear every day or just once or twice a year. There are many styles and fabrics to choose from that can convey a different message. Now, a, a double-breasted wool suit says something completely different from a cotton seersucker suit. The single-breasted two-button navy or dark gray suit is a classic style that is good for most any occasion. The next thing you need to figure out is your measurements. Now, a tailor can do all this for you, but most people can't afford to have a suit tailor-made. According to Sundar Doswani, who is the wardrobe consultant at the Tailored Man, is a, a tailored shop down on uh, Duke Street, 75% of men will buy their suit pre-made off the rack. Now, if you plan to buy off the rack, you will typically see um, a measurement uh, like 38 short or 42 long. That number that you see at the first part is a composite measurement of the chest and the shoulder. Now, the, the length represents the arm and the jacket itself. Now, I am a 38 regular. Now, I'm wearing this suit as my visual aid today to demonstrate what a off-the-rack suit looks like. I bought this just recently, um, and I have not had it tailored yet. <clears throat> now, the first thing you're going to do is try on the jacket. The jacket should fit snug enough that you can just fit a fist inside the jacket at the second button, the top button there, without it being too tight or too loose. It should just fit. The jacket itself should be long enough that when your arms hang down, you can just cup the bottom of the jacket with your fingers. The shoulders should hug your shoulders, and the shoulder pads should never extend beyond your shoulders. Now, a simple test is to stand against a wall with your arm at your side. And if the shoulder pad touches the wall before your shoulder, you want a smaller size. This is probably the single most important measurement because this cannot be altered by a tailor after it's purchased. The sleeve should finish at the wrist bone. And with roughly one half inch of shirt showing just below the sleeve. The lapel should lay flat against the neck and the chest without any kind of bulging. If it does this, it's too big. Not to lay flat. Lastly, consider the vents. Now the vents are the cuts on the back and the sides of the suit. A single vent down the center is a, a classic all-purpose look. Works well for anything. While a double vent, like I have here, is a, a more European style. It lends an air of sophistication. To the suit. A jacket without vents presents a very uh, dated look and should be avoided. The pants are much like any other pants you would buy. They'll come in two styles, plain or pleated. Pleated pants will uh, be roomier in the front, um, and plain pants, like I have here, will present a slimmer profile. Uh, the plain front is a more fashionable look, however, that's not to say that pleats should not be worn. It's a matter of personal preference. When the jacket is worn correctly, the top of the pants, the pleats will never be seen, so it doesn't really make much difference. The pants should hug with 
without being tight. If you look like thug life or a hipster in skinny jeans, you're doing it wrong. The break is probably uh, the single biggest area of controversy as far as suits go. Um, the break is the area at the bottom of the leg where the pant touches, or in some cases does not touch, the shoe. Now a full break will sit entirely on the shoe and usually just above um, the top of the heel. A medium break will be a little bit higher, just barely resting on the shoe and will create a small crease. Uh, the more fashionable trend nowadays is to have no break, which is with the leg completely up off of the shoe, sort of what uh, some people would call high waters. Um, that is a, a bit more of a daring look uh, and is certainly more casual, not really appropriate for formal occasions. Um, now, plain front pants should not have cuffs. However, pleated pants should always have cuffs. The only exception to this is for shorter individuals because a uh, cuff will shorten the leg. Having no cuff will actually make the leg appear longer and make the person appear taller than they really are. Now that you have all of that, the next thing you want to do is try on the suit. Always wear a dress, sh shirt, and shoes when you try on your suit. And if you don't have one, the store that you're buying one at will probably be able to supply one for you. See how it looks from all angles. That'll be three mirrors that you can look at. Once you have the suit that you like, the next step is to take it to a tailor. You didn't think you were done, did you? No. You've got to have it altered to make sure it fits perfectly because even the largest stores are not going to have not going to be very likely to have a suit that fits perfectly straight off the box. But, you know, that's okay, because that's what tailors are for. And it's usually pretty reasonable. Lastly, I want to pass on a few simple rules for wearing your suit. One, always button the top button when standing. Never button the bottom button. And always unbutton your jacket when sitting. There's no exception. Number two, don't forget to remove the stitching in the vents. All vents on suits off the rack come with stitching. It's uh, for transporting the suits. But that should be removed when worn. Number three, a bold tie should be paired with a subtle shirt. Uh, don't be afraid of patterns, but make sure that uh, you're not overdoing it. And lastly, don't be afraid to add style touches, such as a pocket square, tie bar or a lapel pin. Just don't do all three. Now that I've taken you through the steps of buying a good suit, some of you are probably still asking, why would I need a suit? On the television show How I Met Your Mother, the character Barney Stinson always wears a suit. In one episode he says, think of me like Yoda, but instead of being little and green, I wear suits and I'm awesome. I'm your bro. I'm Broda. So I say, go out there, wear that suit. Get that job. Get that girl. Get that guy. Get married. Get buried. Do it all in style. Get a suit.